Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I had an opportunity to pick this up the other day and it just got me reminiscing about E30s and I wanted to talk to you about them. E30s were my first love of German cars. I, my neighbor had a car just like this way back when I was in high school. It was a white 1991 318 IS and I just never had never really paid attention to German cars before until I he had that and I, I just fell in love with E30s. I always liked them after that. I ended up owning that car for a while. Unfortunately uh, it was crashed and anyway there were many more E30s after that. I haven't owned one for a while. My last couple were a couple of convertibles maybe five or six years ago, and I sold them before the E30 prices just went absolutely insane. I wish I had them now today. Um, so like I said, I picked this up the other day and have had a chance to kind of look it over. Unfortunately, this car can't be saved. It's I know it looks gorgeous from the angle you're seeing it right now. Uh, this car is T-boned in the side. And unfortunately, it's smacked in the front. And so it has that going for it and or against it. And I got to looking at it real close once we got it home. And I could see that this car is actually rusty. Um, it's got a really nice paint job on it, but it's had a rear quarter put on it and there's rust starting on the frame. So I'm not going to save this car. Um, it's just too far gone to be economical. But it, like I said, it got me reminiscing about E30s and I'm like, you know what? I should tell the subscribers about my love of E30s. I've had lots of them. Just when we went and picked this up, opening the door and smelling the leather just, you know, all the memories came back in of, of owning these. There's something special about these cars to me. They drive, it's a unique driving experience. The sound, the ride quality, the feeling of the steering, it's kind of go-kart-like. Um, I don't know, go drive one if you can find a nice one <laughs> to drive. They're getting really hard to find. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about this one. This is a 325iX. Um, they're quite rare. In the United States, they made these from 1988 to 91. The iX is all-wheel drive. Um, they made these in two and four-door. This is a two-door. It's actually been lowered a little bit. It's got H&R Sport Springs on it. Um, it's a five-speed manual, got sport seats. Interior's really nice. This is actually a 1988. 88 was the only year they had came with metal bumpers. Somebody did a plastic bumper conversion on this car, so it looks like an 89 or 90 or 91. And the big giveaway to when you're, when you're other than the badge, obviously, when you see one of these cars and you see this uh, fender molding and these side skirts, these are specific to an all-wheel drive E30. Um, and the, if it's stock, the ride height is actually a little bit higher um, than a regular two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive car. But this one's lowered to about where a normal, like a sport model, 325 IS would be. So let me show you inside. This car has black leather. Um, these sport seats are incredible. So inside we have these absolutely gorgeous black leather seats. I haven't seen sport seats this nice in a really long time. Uh, most of them are, bolsters are all wore out. This just has a little bit of wear on the piping. Almost to the point where I wonder if these haven't been um, reupholstered at some point. I don't know. They look original to me, but whatever. They're, they're very nice. Like I said, just sitting in here and smelling it, just kind of like, oh yes, I remember these cars. So, uh, 
like I said, they're kind of kind of small, but they are even even though I'm six foot two and big, um, I fit in here just fine. They and there's plenty of headroom. I think German people are generally tall folk, and so these cars work out really well. Um, the bolsters hold you in really nice. I don't know. Can you just tell from my face? I miss these cars. I wish I had another one again. I might just have to buy one. What do you think? I don't know. Um, this one's actually got a short shifter that somebody put in. I don't know the brand yet, but nice little short throw. They're five-speed manual. Some of these all-wheel drive cars did come with automatic transmission. Uh, this one has heated seats, um, which don't work. I think only the seat back of the driver's seat worked. The other one didn't work at all. But that's pretty common. I mean, this is 1988. How many years old is this? 34 years old? Yeah. So getting up there in age. I don't really care for the placement of this Bluetooth radio that somebody put in here. Isn't that kind of weird? And like you go to like start the car and your hand hits it kind of kind of odd placement you can't even hardly get to the defrost buttons and just weird anyway um, this is a a factory mtech steering wheel this would not have come in the car from the factory but this would have been an upgrade similar to what an m3 has with the nice hand hand grips here very cool option somebody added on all right we got to hear this thing the sound too, you know, just brings back memories as well. Yep, the sound of the starter, the sound of the valve train. They're kind of noisy in the valve train because if you don't do uh, valve adjustments, you know, it's got mechanical eccentrics on the um, rocker arm shaft, so you can hear all that. This has a stock muffler on it. Yep, that's what they sound like. The seating position is perfect. The position of the shifter, the pedals, everything is really good on these cars. Kind of like, I think the only modern car that comes anywhere near what an E30 is to me is probably the new 2 Series, like the 230, M235i or something like that. Kind of the similar kind of package, but uh, still, doesn't do it for me quite like an E30. All right, let's look under the hood really quick. If we can get it open here, poor thing is just destroyed on the front of this car. I can barely, and you can see the accident damage there a little bit. And we got some melting plastic on the exhaust manifold smoking there, but uh, don't mind that too much. So here we have, uh, even though this is a 325iX, the engine is the same as the other E30s. I believe it, the block actually has a different part number, something with the mounting is a little different, and uh, the front differential and the CV axles actually go through the oil pan on these, so it's a little different. But the engine's basically the same. This is an M20, 2.5 liter, inline six cylinder, this is the timing belt BMW engine. Um, they only did these from 87 to 91 in the US, 92 and 90, some 93 convertibles. And there's also a 2.7 liter version of this engine that was called the Etta. That was in 80, let's see. You make me really think back to my, to my E30 knowledge here. I think the Etta started in 84 or 5 as well. Because the e, uh, E30 came out in 1984 um, as a 318i with an M10 engine, different engine, four cylinder. So anyway, the timing belt engine, 2.7 liter and 2.5 liter. The 2.5 liter is kind of the more high performance one. And that's what we have here. Timing belt's very easy to change on these. Um, 
I'm not going to go into that here in this video, but it's very easy to change. And other than um, the shock towers are completely different on the all-wheel drive car here, just the shape and everything about them. Other than that, it's basically the same under the hood. They had a different brake booster. And that's pretty much it. Pretty basic, uh, just good, reliable. These engines never really had any problems other than um, if you didn't do a timing belt service every 60, 50 to 60,000 miles on these, if they failed, it would bend all the valves. Just like on your Honda or something like that. You just wanna make sure you do a timing belt service. And the engines are very reliable. Um, occasionally they're plagued with some electrical issues but it's nothing really that complicated uh, maybe some vacuum leaks might make them idle a little bit weird but you keep up on your uh, make sure the intake gaskets aren't leaking intake boots don't have cracks this one actually see a little crack on it so then you end up with unmetered air just like any car you get a crack beyond the airflow meter you get unmetered air in it's just like having a vacuum leak and the thing won't run right so here's another thing I just noticed. This car has 224,000 miles on it. Somebody did their timing belt service and water pump. Look at that. They put a uh, tag here. So this timing belt was done July 21st of 2021 when it had 222,300 miles. And they did the tensioner. Looks like maybe they didn't do the water pump but they did the tensioner. And I found the old tensioner and water pump, or uh, timing belt in the trunk. So good to know that somebody was doing their maintenance on this car. Um, so yeah, we know the thing runs great, so I know the engine's good. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a jack out and I'm gonna show you a little test that you can do to see if the transfer case and viscous coupling are working. So this works kind of like your full-time all-wheel drive Jeep Grand Cherokee from the 90s did. There's a viscous coupling that uses a uh, silicone-based fluid and a clutch system inside the transfer case. So there have been instances where, well, I mean, the clutches can wear out if you abuse them. They're, they're, I don't know, they're actually pretty good solid systems, but a lot of people have reported, oh, somebody tow dollied it, or I called AAA and they uh, towed my car on a wrecker with the rear wheels down or something and just destroy the clutches in that viscous coupling. So what we're gonna do is test it right now. And, and the easiest way to, for you to test that at home is get your floor jack out, jack the back of the car up, just a couple few inches off the ground and see if the front wheels will pull you back and forth. And the rear wheels should also spin about the same as the front wheels off the ground. Then you know that that system is all working. If nothing happens or just the rear wheels spin with them off the ground, then the viscous coupling is damaged or wore out. So let's do that really quick. All right, so I got my floor jack in. We're just gonna lift directly from the rear differential here, which is pretty much right in the middle of the car. So we should lift both rear wheels fairly equally. Oh, and I just wanted to show too, while we're under here, if we pan back a little bit, just so you see that I wasn't kidding. Look at that. There's paint over some pretty good rust starting on this car. So, and it's actually all over throughout the frame, even around the door frames and everything. So that along with the pretty massive T-bone damage has rendered this car done. You can get a much cleaner example. You can get a really nice one of these for probably in the mid-teens still. It would cost way more than that to properly fix this car. So, Anyhow, 
let's see if we can't slip off the jack now. <laughs> so let's start the engine. We got the rear wheels off the ground. Car is in neutral. The emergency brake is off. And I don't know guys, I can actually move these tires. So let's see, I think the coupling might actually be wore out on this car. Let's give it a try. Don't mind the fan hitting a bunch of plastic sound. Yep, see how we're not moving forward? It tries when I let the clutch out. So this, this coupling has worn clutches. And that's how you tell. It, what it should do is cr the front wheel should actually be pulling the car along right now. And we'll go reverse. So anyhow, now we know it's also got a bad viscous coupling. What else can I tell you about this car um, before we end the video talking about my E30 reminiscing here? I think what I'll do is jack up the front of the car really quick and show you the uh, interesting um, CV axle setup they have in the front of these. All right, we're going to uh, lift the front of this car up. Unfortunately, with the H&R uh, lowering springs it has, I can't get, quite get the floor jack underneath the front subframe, um, under engine subframe. So what I'm gonna do is just lift from one side and we can kind of peek in and see what's going on. So we're going to come in right underneath where the sway bar mounts to the subframe. That's a good solid point on the frame where we won't damage anything. I also believe these all wheel drive cars have an aluminum subframe here, which is unique. This is actually only the second 325iX I owned. I owned a four-door uh, briefly many years ago, probably 10 plus years ago. And it really wasn't that nice of a car, but played around with it a little bit, sold it to somebody who had fun with it for a while. Another tip, never get underneath the car unless you have a jack stand and uh, Especially not the Harbor Freight ones, <laughs> which I think they had a recall on. So let me see where's a good angle to show you. All right, we're gonna look under the side here. We're just gonna peer in. We're not getting underneath the car with just the jack. And I just wanna show, you know, yet again, there's another example of some rust on this car. So there is our transfer case the front drive line comes out and goes up to your front differential which mounts there just beside the oil pan the oil pan is a very weird shape on this car and then you can see the CV axle actually goes through the oil pan on these cars and then the other one out the other side Hopefully you can see that on, on camera there. Very weird, kind of like an Audi Quattro, um, something like that. A little bit different than, a, actually, it is a little bit different than a, an Audi Quattro or a Subaru because on those cars, they act more like a 
front wheel drive car with the CV axles coming out of the transmission and then one going back to, th this kind of works opposite. It's a rear wheel drive platform with the front wheels um, having a, uh, its own drive shaft coming from the transfer case. Kind of like I said, kind of like a full time all wheel drive Jeep Grand Cherokee. So that's pretty much it for our derelict, very sad story of a 325iX here. This car is not going to go back on the road, even though it's got gorgeous uh, aftermarket Alpina wheels that they don't make anymore. Anyway, uh, we're going to catch you next time, and I'm going to show you some of the neat E30s I've owned in the past. Like and subscribe the video so you know when more content is coming out. And we will be back with you real soon on the next one.